So each of these bins represents one half of a log. And so I'm still using one bag per log, so we're going to put half this bag in. And you don't want to put more than one bin at a time because it'll be too hard to mix it up and you won't get a good even mixture. So we're going to add half of this bag of busted up wheat grain spawn. And then we're going to add one of these 16 ounce cups of plaster of Paris. Shake that in there. Now we're going to let this mix up for about a minute. kind of mesmerizing to watch. You see almost every little piece of hull and grain spawn in there is getting coated with the plaster so it pours over itself very easily. Now if you're doing straw instead of the cottonseed hulls or some other type of substrate that uh, is not in like a pellet kind of size, like you know straw is little uh, pieces and usually you chop it up between one four inches long but if you have the straw cut too long it'll make mixing it like this too difficult and uh, you won't get a good mixture also too I find that the uh, rye grain sometimes helps uh, get a better mixture in stuff like straw because the grain is a uh, more of a, a lengthy kind of kernel whereas the wheat grain is roundish so the, the length of it kind of keeps it from all settling down to the, uh, the bottom. Also too this kind of cools off the hulls a little faster. They're still, they're still a little bit warm when I threw them in there, but the drum's cold and the, the pouring out over the, the open air will cool it off too. So that's definitely mixed up. I probably could have poured it even earlier than that. Notice that I have the bin facing this direction because it's going to pour out from left to right. Or right, right to left when you're facing the, the drum. I hardly got any on the floor. I recommend uh, keep organized. Split the bags up with the, the same bins on the same row. That way, you know, if you accidentally put like uh, a little more grain and a half one, things don't get lopsided. Also too, if I haven't said, I refrigerate all my spawn at least a day ahead of time now so that uh, the cold spawn cools down the uh, warm cotton seed hulls too so you can mix it up a little bit faster that way. Add another half bag. I don't know why that closed that up. But we're going to add another 16 ounce cup of plastic. While that's doing that, you can see over here I'm getting some good second flush action. I still only averaged about 10 pounds off the first flush logs of the, uh, the ones that had plaster. And from what I can see, uh, these ones over here 
are made without plaster and they're looking like they're going to put off probably about the same amount but these are doing good and uh, I pretty much got room for one more shelving unit down here but I can hopefully get enough uh, enough shelving to run a full three flushes without any contamination and so even then I can take those older logs out put them outside because it's still still a little warm it's getting towards the fall where it's, the humidity's up and it's it rained all yesterday and today so good opportunity to put mushroom old mushroom logs outside and get a couple extra pounds off of them Plus, I think out, outdoor grown mushrooms still always look better. The sun, sunlight helps with the color. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up these two other bins. And then I'll show you how I'm making these logs using the hanging bucket. Okay, ready to make these logs. Now the first thing I'll show you is that if you would rather dump the uh, mixture at an angle here I have a weight with another clip that you see you put on the one end and it uh, will hold the bucket over to one side when you have the weight on the other just be sure to uh, secure make sure that your plastic is good and secure on the bucket and that the log is fairly straight underneath of it so that the log isn't fall over and slide the uh, the plastic off and want to almost dump out on the floor. Yeah, it's happened to me. <laughs> so, I'm going to alcohol up my arms. And I'm going to take some paper towel. Get some alcohol in that. I'm going to Wipe down the outside of the bucket where the plastic's going to go around. And I'm going to wipe the inside. And of course, after I've done this, I've rinsed it out hard with the garden hose in between runs. Make sure nothing's going to fall into it. Scissors, cable tie. Now I'm going to make the size of these logs the same, but you may want to use a little bit more slack in the amount of tubing you use, just because some of it's going to be climbing up the uh, the side of the bucket. So that, that's about how much I pull off. Maybe a little more. I can always adjust the bucket too if I don't think the height is appropriate. Now, you're going to find it's going to be a pain in the butt to uh, get this plastic sheeting on there if you don't stretch the, the mouth of the mouth of the tubing out like that. And then get one edge over and work your hands to the other end. Like so. Kind of get the Get the end of the, the plastic tubing straight with no folds in it so that it holds as flat as possible to the bucket because the, the more holes to it, the better chance it's not going to slip off of there while you're doing this. Again, too, see that I have that shelf underneath me so I don't have the, the log coming in contact with the wet floor. There we go, that's good. Just a little bit there. Now also too, 
make it a little more secure so it don't pop off there. Get some masking tape, or better yet, if you can find some uh, double wide masking tape. You just kind of put a little bit around it. And the, some of it on the, the bag, and some of it on the bucket. Just as it has a little something extra to hold it on there. I'm gonna use a little more alcohol until I touch that tape roll. So you see I have a, I have a little bit of extra slack. That's not too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and do the method where I just leave that weight off the front. So I'm gonna start with this row. Kind of shake everything to one corner so it doesn't dump out hard. And I'm gonna shake it into the bag. Little bit by little bit. Kind of square it up a little bit. It's all right if you have some slack down there at the base, because we're going to adjust that afterwards. Now if you get to this point and you think that the uh, your plastic isn't going to hold up there, or you start seeing it slipping. Try to put this down immediately and catch it so it doesn't fall off there. But you can see the better you have the uh, the base of it squared up, the less the chance that that's going to happen. And we're just going to fill it all the way to the top, past the bottom of the bucket, as well as, you know, as far as it'll go. I see it's still above the line of the bucket, but it's below the outside line. So I'm gonna kind of pick it up and shimmy some of it down there. Make sure I hold the bucket and the plastic, take that tape off. And then slide it off, like so. Go over here and grab another cable tie. I'll take this to a cleaner part of the floor that's flat and solid. And I'm going to not so as much slap the bottom onto the ground, but more of a yanking up on the plastic to use some inertia and shift the plastic forward and shift everything else down. So, you see any spots where not filling up, kind of move it around too. Remember that we're going to go ahead and flatten these out in the end, so if it isn't perfectly filled, that's okay. But you can see, just doing that, I mean, it's decently tight. Even if you didn't flatten out, that would still probably work just fine. I'm going to. Pinch the top down, twist it, slap it and form it so it's flat on the end. Keep on pushing down. Oh, uh, you know what? Don't forget too, you know, I just, I forgot. Because I'm doing two things at once. <laughs> 